Well, today I'm going to show you how to build bridges in TrueNAS scale. So you want to build a bridge in TrueNAS scale. Now, this doesn't sound as difficult as what you would think it would be, at least if you're kind of computer literate. Now, I mean, this TrueNAS scale was the first NAS software I ever came into contact with and honestly I didn't know what I was quite getting into. I'm kind of getting used to it, I'm running VMs off here and using it as a mass storage system for my house, mainly for my Plex server. I've had some issues with it, let's say. So we had some creative runarounds, one of them being having a Nextcloud server run on a Ubuntu virtual machine. The problem that we're having is, for some reason, the VM will not do a pass through for the storage, even though it's on true NAS, we couldn't get it to pull through. So we had essentially to connect the bridge to pull the information through. Now, it wasn't me that worked on this solo. I had my friend who did most of the building, to be honest with you. But being that the fact that we didn't see a video online that explained anything to do with how to actually build the bridge, apart from one little paragraph, which basically said, do the same thing over and over and over, was a bit little concerning. Now, the reason that we're not running this for the app through True, uh, true NAS scale is essentially I couldn't get the app to work. No matter what I did, the app would just not connect up to the actual machine. We couldn't get the certificate on. Even when we used the two charts, uh, Nextcloud just could not get it connected with the storage. So we thought it'd be easier just to run it for the VM. We had the VM running anyway because I have a pterodactyl server on there. So it just made some sense just to run it through Ubuntu essentially. And my friend went out to set that up. Then that's where we found out we had issues of just we could just not get the storage connected. So essentially these are the steps of how you should be doing it and any troubleshooting that you may want to take in place which may help you so hopefully this helps some people now as you can see now we're in the true nas scale most people know what the dashboard looks like this is just my personal nas system i have running downstairs now it has got high cpu usage and um things like that mainly because i'm running a vm on it that is currently running a server system as well as nextcloud if people want more information on how i set this up later on drop me a comment we'll set that up and sh we'll show you how all that works um now as you can see here if i just scroll down you will notice i have a net uh, my network set up with the standard emp 4 so and a br0 now that's my bridge that links it out so if i go into my networking you'll see here the two connections the standard and the bridge so what i'm going to do first of all i'm going to just get rid of this bridge i'm going to set this up as if it was set up initially now there is a couple things you will need to do initially and if people don't know how to do this again i will make another video but as you can see here i have name server set up here 1.1.1.1 1, 1, 1. 1. 1 and 1.0.0.1 1. on a d on my default room the reason i have this set up on a static ip is for one reason and one reason only so what i found out is when i initially did this um, I didn't have access to my apps, nor did I have access to my dashboard updates. And I couldn't work out how to update anything or do anything essentially in TrueNAS scale. Uh, it had to come back that it had to have these name servers inserted. So what I would do first is I would go put name servers in. Again, if people don't know how to do this or they can't find another video or anything online to do this, drop a comment. I will make a quick video showing people how to do this. It's very simple. It doesn't take two minutes. You just have to do it within TrueNAS interface itself. Um, now, going back to this, I am just going to say delete this bridge. I'm going to confirm that. And uh, what I'm going to do is add my static IP back into here. So I'm just going to press apply 192.168.34 now that is the that this is the ip that i always use mainly for my true nas mainly because i've got everything else set up on here to work that way so let me just test changes confirm hopefully this will take a couple of seconds and let me go back into true nas there we are save changes save so they'll be made permanent now when starting up a bridge it's quite simple so in here you're either going to have two options enabled. You're either going to have the DHCP enabled or you're going to have a IP address down here. Realistically, what I would recommend doing is one, removing the DHCP from here and putting an IP in just to start off with. Mainly because the DHCP will pull back an automatic IP, IPv4 or an IPv6 um, if you haven't got a static one set. So I would remove, I recommend removing this and putting an IP in here. Next up is add a bridge. We're going to call this BR0. Now, when it comes to the bridges, there are many different names you can give them, but they must start with either BondX, VLANX, or BRX. For a bridge, always go BR. 
Um, I don't know if Bond, VLAN, anything makes a difference, but I always recommend for a bridge good BR. It can be any number you want. BR is zero is just generally easier for me. Description, give a description if you want. Oh, that's what I'll put here. Bridge oops, to, to um, next loud. I don't want this to have DHCP and I don't want automatic, automatic figure IPv4. Now, before I do anything in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it. It's probably going to give me a because I've covered a capital B. Let's change that to a lowercase. I'm going to apply that. But it saves here. Test changes. Confirm it. And then we're going to save that. Okay, that we made permanent. What I want to do next is go into here. I want to remove this IP here. Let's get rid of that. We're going to apply it. We are not going to test changes right now. We are going to go into the bridge. We're going to make sure the bridge member is the initial EMP for SO or whatever yours is called. It will be this first one here. So we'll select, oops, select that. So it appears in here. We'll pull down and then we want to add a IP address. I'm going to put in the 192.168.34 if it lets me. Oops. 34. Then I'm going to apply that. From here, we want to then test the changes. Confirm. Test changes. Okay, what I would normally do from here is if we get this message that it's not to work properly, we'll try to go back to it. There we go. So it's now it's connected. Back to that. You want to log back in with your root password. And then you want to press save changes. Okay. If we go back into the network now, you'll notice we have the main uh, the connection and then the bridge is there it's fully active and that's it that bridge is now active one thing i noticed whilst i'm in the process of actually editing the video is that i didn't tell you about a troubleshoot initially that i came across as well so whilst in the process of setting up a bridge i kept having an error where it wouldn't actually switch back over to the true um on when i searched in the ip it would just go back after 60 seconds to the default network settings that i set up originally um, we discovered the reason for this is i have a virtual machine running here and this is for my pterodactyl and my next cloud server and what was happening is in the devices and in nic if i go into edit here it had a nic to attach this was connected up to my actual network so it wasn't actually allowing it to switch over because it was trying it was still connected via this so we had to physically go in here and remove this from the nic so it could actually work so if you're finding out it's just going back after 60 seconds come check out your virtual machine if you have one remove the nic and then once the bridge is all set up connect it up with the bridge itself and then that should work from there